Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Center. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Coroner. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, first and foremost, this case ended up being interesting from uh, many different perspectives, because first... It's basically about a building, and obviously the guy who kind of owns it and is doing whatever he is doing to it is more concerned about, like, yeah, can we keep this murder thing hush-hush? You know, I just, you know, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I'm going to be purely disrespectful because this could screw over my business because there's also, like, generators and stuff like that being stolen from him. So it's like one thing after another here. He's like, so could we just not ruin the reputation of what I'm trying to do here uh, by kind of admitting what's going on? So... There's a guy named Lester, uh, at least we thought at the time that was his name, who was killed, but it turns out he was a fake security guard, which that's not even, you know, obviously it ties into the opening. I thought, like, Ruby was just a little girl just kicking it there because I thought maybe she lived nearby and she was just doing the whole thing, drawing on the eggs and stuff like that. But then, like, when she heard everything go down, I thought she got scared and tried to run. Like, I didn't realize, like, oh, we ended up finding out later on that the dude that died, his name, his real name is Kalik. Uh, ended up dying. It was like, like I said, a fake um, uh, costume and everything he used because, well, because at first they end up finding out that um, potentially that he's an artist. That like what they end up finding is like her and Donovan when they go and check out the crime scene and they go to a higher level. Which obviously there's the whole bird poop thing, which I love River being like, oh pigeon poop. She's like, oh, because she was so disgusted by. It. But then Jenny accidentally steps in some. Uh, but they end up finding his art. And I love that Jenny's like, just put me over the edge. I like, hold my legs. She's like, no, that's... She's like, what, you think I'm going to hold yours? It's like, I think Donovan's scared because of his current circumstances, which he hasn't brought up to Jenny. I thought he probably... He's probably a little scared that he wasn't in the peakest position or, how, like, how much pain he'd be in doing that. Like, it could be a situation. I thought that might be kind of a scary situation, but luckily it didn't turn into that. So it's kind of... I was kind of worried about nothing. But I, I wonder if that was on Donovan's mind at the time. But it turns out this guy is a artist with kind of like a lot of work all over the place. And they ultimately were able to track down who he is because it turns out the like obviously like Jenny no like notice like the little branches on like one of his pieces of art. And there's also like markings on uh, his hands. And so she ultimately checks his foot for a mark. And it turns out he was struck by lightning and survived, which I've only I, I, at first. Well, I guess. The reason why he has the burn marks on his his hand because while he was spray painting and doing his art, he ended up getting struck by lightning. That and he was holding on to the can, which got superheated. So that's where the burn marks on it. Because I know like the talk about like people who get struck by lightning and survive is that it gives you. Uh, it's weird to say, but like a, a like permanent tattoo because like there's like a like a special marking that comes on your body from being struck by lightning. It's kind of almost like the pattern that was on his foot from the lightning leaving. That basically it's like that, but on your actual like chest or like your back or something like that. Like you, if you're curious about it, if you've never seen it, you can look it up. It's weird to say, but it's actually a pretty dope design. Granted, you get it in the most, you know, impo like not impossible, but like one of the least likely. Like it's such a like, what are the chances of not only getting struck by lightning, but also surviving it, you know? So that's a whole thing in itself. So I think that's, it's, it's interesting, but also, like I said, it's just like, you know, it's, it's kind of messed up, but at the same time, when you, like the marking that gets left behind in a weird way, you could be like, oh, that's actually pretty sick. Um, but nevertheless, um, it's actually interesting to what this case also did for Donovan, because like the moment he went in and saw Kalik's body the first time, he saw himself because it is that they and then he ends up talking about it later on. It's like, man, this guy survived getting struck by lightning just to end up dead, shot by someone. It's like that is the sucky thing. Like you can survive the most terrible thing and then just like like that's also that like it's a weird comparison to make, but it'd be like being in the military, surviving like being in like a war torn like country or something. Going back to your original country and then like dying by hit and run. It's it's like that. It's 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 like just some like you. It's like after everything you've been through and then like to die like this. It it sucks, you know, because you thought you had a second lease on life. You thought you had a no. It's like oh, this thing, this like really low chance thing happened to me and I survived. And then like just for your life to kind of be uh, your, your your check to get rung, uh, your bell to get rung. I guess that's what would be more apt. Staying safe, um, you know under different circumstances like that is actually kind of depressing. And it kind of gets you thinking about your mortality. I think it got Donovan definitely thinking about his mortality. 
because he'd actually met that artist lady earlier in the episode, and at the end of it all, he got her painting him because it's like she's like, "What made you?" Because he isn't really too keen. Like he's like, "I like to be low key." So someone doing my portrait, he's like, "I'm not all for it," but for him, it's like. We could all basically get checked out at any point in time. Like, there's no, like, guarantees, especially with his job. Like, just because it's, like, this and that, it's, like, you see enough stuff during his job that it's enough to wear you down. But it's also to think of, like, it puts things in perspective of, like, you never know when your time is up. Like, you know, there's no, like, oh, you're not guaranteed anything in life. It's just, it can, it can come and go just like that. So, very morbid, not really morbid, but it's just, like, a very realistic thought to kind of keep in mind. And so he wanted to kind of be immortalized, you know, it's like I had to be able to give it a shot being immortalized in some shape or form. Because uh, Kalik, I mean, uh, uh, Malik talks about it later on. Because when they end up finding out the person behind all of this is the security guard that they met at the beginning. Uh, I thought that was him because you actually get, like, if you look at the beginning of the episode when Ruby's looking, you don't get to see the dude's head, but you do see his security card, like, pet card. And the moment we saw the dude, I was like, wasn't well, that a killer because isn't he wearing it? I was like, not unless it was someone, a uh, fake guy wearing that. But it's like, no, nope, turns out it is exactly that dude. It's like, yeah, uh, blending in like, oh, yeah, what happened? Uh, discovered the body and stuff like that. It's easy to discover the body when you were actually the one who committed a crime. Uh, but it was sad because he would like snuck on, you know, into that place being a fake security guard, uh, spray painting, um, you know, working on what he was working on. And he heard a noise, got spooked. But it turns out it was this uh, guard, what's his name, Ford, who was working like he's the one that was helping the inside man stealing the generators and stuff like that. And he thought Kalik was like a real security guard. So that's why he ended up killing him. So... It's just, it's a, you know, terrible situation. It's like, you know, and Malik was like, at the end of the day, um, he lived at, in the sense of like, he was alive, he was here, and he left the legacy behind. Keep like, you know, hit, tapping Donovan, like, keep your eyes up type of thing, you know? And I, I thought that was such an interesting thing. Because we ended up learning an interesting thing about, um, because when they were originally thinking the victim's name was Lester, they went to his house probably thinking to talk to, like, his wife. Uh, you know, the um, when the cops have to let someone know uh, about uh, their, some, a significant someone in their life's death. And um, Malik actually talked about not being really good at it because, like, he gets nervous about it because he remembers the day, like, his mom got told about his dad's death. It was essentially... Um, he had talked about the fact is like the what what time of day it was the doorbell rang like you know his mom what his mom was doing it's like those moments stay with you even Donovan be like if you want me to I can I can he's like no nah, no nah. and he tries to keep it up be but like you know I'm on a job it's almost like I, I'm on a job I got I get, regardless of my personal situation got to bury that it's like that's sad that you like had to be like no 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 I got this it's it, it part of the job I'm, I'm on the job I got to do my job it's got to put my all my business aside you know so that was good like because he doesn't really open up too much about his. Like, that just opens up and doesn't really open up in general at all. So, I thought that was interesting. Um, another aspect to this, well, well, cases we got introduced. Uh, I thought it'd be more of a thing. It's just kind of like, nah, it just casually happened, uh, dealt with in between episodes is uh, Jenny's new assistant, Alphonse. Uh, he's putting up art and stuff like that. But, like, Allison had left, like, one of her breast pumps there. Um, but uh, he's just kind of like, a, he seems like such a people pleaser. Like, oh, I'm going to do that for you. And it's like, oh, cool. Like, she's like, could you look up uh, people who are admitted to the hospital, um, essentially, for, like, being struck by lightning? He's like, oh, cool. I can actually look at it, you know, like, you know, when the weather was. And you kind of give you a time frame of when it did thunderstorm and stuff like that. She's like, good. But for the past six months, he's like, I knew we were on the same page here. It's like, he, like I say, he's such a people pleaser, thumbs up and everything. So it's going to be interesting to get to know this dude. Uh, will he pop up in the story as much as Allison did? Or is he just going to be like far and few between type of thing? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see. Um, but it is, um, the sad situation is like, uh, I'm skipping around a lot in this, uh, episode uh this you know review but i do apologize but like ruby like calling her dad because it's the thing of like she was about to call 911 but she was like no 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 and she calls her dad instead and leaves a voice message because she's like i couldn't get into the house so i had to sneak in it's like i was scared like tell me like you're okay and it, like i said it was a while before it correlated in my head that like oh that was her dad but um that colleague the guy who died at the beginning was her dad is what i'm saying but um 
I think because Jenny kind of nails it later on. I think it's like she's moving. All that adrenaline is keeping her from because like if she stops and thinks about it too much, then it kind of seeps in what happens. So I think that's why she didn't call the nine one one because she was scared. But also call, calling nine one one would admit that like it was real. It happened. Like my dad might be dead. It's like no, no. As long as like I'm able to call him, that it's okay. Like you know, she even like. Well, because the dude comes and busts into your house. At first, I was like, there's a knock at the door. I was like, oh, please don't tell me. It's like, you guys shouldn't. Because I'm, I'm like, cops are normally announce themselves, which uh, that's why I was like, oh, it probably is actually the guy. Because she looked at the door hole, and I think she saw enough of him to realize it was him. I thought she was getting scared, but it was actually going to be the police. But I was like, they haven't announced, like, oh, we're the police or something like that. Like, after, like, the first knock or second. So I was like, oh, so it really is him. Um, but luckily she got away and she went to visit her mom who's in the hospital right now when it like she was about to have surgery for like a removing a tumor. And that's when like Jenny looked at uh, a picture above her bed and then looked out and out the buildings and it turns out like that's what he was working on. He was going to these different rooftops so he could spray paint stuff. It was basically he wanted to put a big piece of art that basically his um, that Ruby's mom could see from from her um, hospital room. You know, and Ruby wanted to finish it for her, um, for her dad, you know, f you know, cause it was meant to be something that was so beautiful for her, for the, um, her mom and you know, with Jenny's help, she's able to finish it. And you see at the end, her holding her mom as they look at it, you know, a tear running down her eye because it's just like, you know, like colleagues gone, but it's just kind of like this beautiful thing that him and his daughter were able to make, you know, so it's a bittersweet, uh, ending in that regard. Um, so, uh, there was that. Uh, I didn't bring it up, but there is the whole artist and uh, Donovan hooking up. And I'm like, hopefully that works a little bit better than uh, Donovan's relationship circumstances last season. Things didn't work out in that regard. Uh, they were super complicated, but uh, maybe there could be something good that comes from this. Obviously, he's still got to worry about his situation. Uh, and how long is it going to be before he actually tells anyone about it? Which, once again, I, I, I think I brought it up. I, I probably didn't bring it up before, but there's an interesting parallel of, like, Jenny doesn't really talk about her issues either. Hers are kind of very, like, deep-seated in, like, trauma and, like, kind of mental and emotional stuff. But, like, Donovan's dealing with something that is both mental and, and emotional and physical, but, like, neither one. They're, like, partners in crime and, obviously, solving crime. But it's, like they're not really communicating like they're they're friends but it's like donovan hasn't opened up to her or malik because malik would be all about I like, do whatever i gotta do to help you because you know donovan's playing it over in his head of like right he might need someone to actually take care of him because he doesn't know like how his body's going to respond to this whole thing so uh but i think it's also like he want because like being relying on other people is not something he's really good at i think it's like I don't want to have to lean on people. I want to, like, you know, because, like, I pr it probably feels like I don't want to be a burden to anyone. So that's why I don't want to... Well, because he's also, like, people will probably be around me on tiptoes and stuff like that. So it's like, I don't want that. So I'm not going to put myself in that position, you know. Uh, I think he wants to be self-sufficient. I think he's just scared to be in a position where, well, for one, realizing, like, oh, like, my, my ticket could get punched. It's the metaphor I was looking for earlier but couldn't think of. Um... But also just like he doesn't want to be in a position where he has to kind of rely on someone. But obviously Jenny has experience in that work with her, her dad who goes off bird watching on his own while Ross is trying to figure out the whole like um, massage therapist thing. Which is like worst time to you know want to become a massage therapist because that's gotten super complicated because of the pandemic. Then also Mateo's going back to like a different school which he was like you can do your classes online so what's up with that. So things are kind of complicated on that front. Um his, but uh, his grandpa goes out on his own, and there's a lady with him. The moment she pops up, I was like, that's Jenny's mom, isn't it? And Because uh, it's just kind of, they go bird watching. She's like, no, I just like to listen. And uh, But then when he gets back home, he was like, yeah, I was, just, I was on a date with a bird. And he looks in the mirror, and he sees a younger version of himself. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Because uh, obviously, that that's a conversation that has to kind of be brought up about Jenny's mom and everything. So... They're so, like, like I said, I, it could just be like, oh, that actually was someone there, but I get the feeling it's more so like, no, that's supposed to be Ginny, uh, Ginny's mom, so. Um, we'll see kind of where things kind of go on that front. Is that supposed to be significant in like the fact is that he's seeing a younger version of himself, or is it supposed to just be like, oh, I feel young at heart because I was around the woman I was in love with, or I, I don't know. Like I said, if it ends up being that, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what that ends up being all about. Uh, but, 
other than that, uh, Jenny actually has some, uh, cemented in her mind that she's going to go see Liam. More so than anything, all she's going to do is like say what's on her heart. like Because her dad was trying to say, like, yeah, sometimes a relationship needs more than just love. But for her, it's just, I want to just express my feelings and that's that. Which Liam is, you know, still working there for his therapy. But then he made it like clear, like, oh, I want to stick around. She's like, you can't just run from your problems. He's like, I'm not running. I kind of want to be here, which I'm like... So I was like, oh, that, because I was like, maybe sleeping together is one thing, but you decided you want to stick around because she offered you to stick around. So I'm like, that seems like it might not just be a job situation. It seems like there might be more, which Jenny gets there later on. I'm like, I expect, I was like, oh, don't tell me she's going to walk in on Liam and her together. But it's like, oh, no, he's there waiting. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, this is okay. Okay. And then, all right, they're hugging. It's like, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. And, um. Yeah, they kind of joke a little bit. They're both like, you know, awkward. She's like, oh, he's like, I don't need much. She's like, yeah, I know. You you, uh, you were living in a treehouse, remember? He's like, right, right, right. And it's just kind of like, a, yeah, my uh, both of them, you know, it's like, oh, he's in uh, AA, uh, not drinking anymore. She's like, oh, you know, he's also in therapy. He's like, oh, his therapy, he brings up about like the horse and stuff like that. And she's like, yeah, my therapy's about kind of... Uh, you know, it's so like them kind of opening up a little bit. And she, she had gotten that painting for him earlier in the episode. So I thought Alphonse was going to ask for it, but it turned out he didn't. But um, it's kind of like, oh, well, this is nice. This is, I slept with someone. I'm like, oh, wow, you just you just beelined and threw that out there. And she's like, oh, okay, okay. But she was kind of accepting of it because it was like, right, we weren't, when I hadn't responded to you earlier. He was like, yeah, I didn't know. She's like, yeah, I just, I didn't know. Like, I get, you, you thought we were over, or so it was fine. Uh, but it's like, right, but I'm also still seeing her. I was like, oh boy. And she's like, Jenny's like, oh, like, right, right now. I'm like, but you sent mixed messages, but in his mind, it's like, I wrote you that letter five months ago and you never responded. So it's like, oh, okay, never, I'm going to get out here. And he's trying to like, be like, no, 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 wait, like Jenny, let's talk. And for her, it's like, right, this is supposed to be you getting therapy, getting better. But then like, that doesn't involve you sleeping with someone and being in a relationship with somebody. So like, then they kind of start targeting each other's issues. Uh, because for her, it's like, is that really, oh, that's really like you getting help. And he's like, you don't want to be happy that basically, essentially throwing in her face, like, oh, like you're dealt like you're kind of stuck with your sister's death and you're it's like yeah you said some stuff you shouldn't have said and even he realizes it when Jenny leaves and it's just kind of like thing of like she's hearing the horse in the background she's just like shut up you horse and just come like feel your feelings and then she just kind of wipes her face and she's just like no so I don't know if it's a thing of like her saying no of like okay I'm not gonna let this get dead like screw my feelings and just bury them deeper or what that means. I'm uh, not how either one of them thought that. Because it is a little misleading. Because it's like she says like I want to see you. Like it is kind of messed up. Because you did like I get it. You left to, to be okay. But it's like it kind of didn't end things in the best place. So you didn't really. She never got any closure. Neither did you. But you didn't make it. Because she didn't. You didn't. Like, it's understandable for her not to respond, like, in five, like, she's got, you got stuff to work on, but it was almost like, you were so focused on what you got to work on, you didn't really take time to really think about what Jenny's going through, like, you know, so, but I guess for him, it's like, right, you don't respond to me for, like, five months, so I guess, I, I guess in his mind, it's like, it's my time to kind of move on, I thought the whole horse situation was supposed to be a metaphor for, like, him dealing potentially with Jenny, but I guess that's more so about him, I think maybe it's a combination, I mean, it, it's obviously therapy-wise, it's supposed to be about him, but I think maybe on some level it is about Ginny as well I don't know uh I just uh, you just kind of feel bad that things kind of played out that way it's just like how Ginny handles this going forward is definitely going to be interesting how does it fix Liam going forward because he even said to himself like oh he doesn't know what he wants it's like we'll, we'll see uh how this all plays out going forward into the next episode but uh really that's all I want to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it Good day and goodbye.